Hey everyone, it's Ryan here. So I've just, I would say, just finished watching uh, Battleground 2017. I this this normally happens for me, what well, used to for a while, but only because I've obviously got to stay off work and the way I was, my sleeping pattern was on the weekend. I fell asleep during the last 15 minutes of the main event. That used to happen to me a lot when I was a lot younger, because obviously, like, I'd have to get up early for work and like school and stuff like that but uh yeah it's been the first time in a while where i've actually fell asleep during the main event i'm surprised i managed to stay up during the whole thing because if i'm honest smackdown pay-per-views are deteriorating as the year goes on they are just not getting better anymore like this time last year smackdown was the show to watch um you know raw was getting boring and smackdown was promoting new stars and like Miz was on his like comeback of a lifetime, um, managed to revamp his character and everything. He had all the star power and amazing matches, uh, but this year it's like they have star power. They certainly do, but some of the matches are either just really botchy, really screwy finishes, really confusing, and it they just don't know what they're doing, and it's just a pain. And it's not down to Jinder being WWE champion. It's nothing to do with that. Um, but it's just like they just really don't know how to balance their divisions anymore. Um, I'll go through the matches with you. Kick off Ty versus Aiden English. Surprisingly, Aiden English won. Uh, if this means a rematch at SummerSlam or another kickoff show, please don't. We've already had two. I don't see why we need another one. Um, so yeah, they had that for the kickoff show. Then we started with the New Day versus the Usos. This was the only good thing about the pay-per-view that match had me hooked and that was like the first 20 minutes half an hour uh the amount of false finishes and moments where you genuinely think oh this could be the end uh there's a bit where xavier woods is going for his uh like his elbow drop from across the ring where he like walks across the ropes for a bit and then jumps across went to go do that gets super kicked by uh one of the usos and that wasn't even the finish uh kofi gets taken out uh because he goes to do his uh just fall thing from the corner where he like falls back and normally falls onto him. They actually catch him, power bomb him onto the floor, and then Xavier goes to jump off the steel steps. And they literally turn around and just uppercut him. I thought that was brilliant. Um, there's a bit where Kofi eventually gets back in after about 15 minutes, uh, and then after a while he gets super kicked by one of the Usos, who immediately leaps and tags the other one in, who does a splash. Uh, Kofi somehow kicks out of that, and. Yeah, it's like it's just a really amazing match, and then there's a bit where, uh, like, I remember there's one bit where Xavier is literally being attacked on his legs for ages, just about gets out of the like single leg Boston Crab they do, um, and at one point he gets like tags Kofi in, grabs um, Uso, like one of the Usos like that, and like. The nice thing, the nice touch about was like he goes down on one leg, but I guess that's part of the move. But I don't know if it's his bad leg or not. But like goes down one leg, and then Kofi hits the elbow like off the backbreaker, and Tom Phillips calls it the midnight hour, which I thought was uh, the big ending into the press down, unless they're both called midnight hour. Um, but I don't know. But yeah, it ends with Kofi does the trouble in paradise, and then Xavier manages to hit his. Uh, elbow from across uh i'll call it like a coast to coast elbow shall we because it works the same way they're on one side of the ring he's on the other jumps all the way across and elbow drop and new day become the new tag team champions uh which will be fitting for a rematch at SummerSlam. Uh, i hope there's some nice stipulation maybe two out of three falls or something would be nice um but yeah um then we had see i can't remember the order because it was just that strange uh, I'll go through what I can remember. We had... Um, I, I can't even remember what matches were there. Okay, let's go with the five women elimination match. I had Becky Lynch to win. Uh, it, it's going alright. Lana, definitely green as hell. Uh, like, as much as I like her, she should just stick to the manager role. Like, her kicks, like, half the time didn't, didn't connect or... She properly kicked them in the back of the head. Um, and it just... Yeah, it, it was just really bad to watch. Um, there's a bit where Lan Tamina's protecting Lana a couple of times. Uh, Lana gets locked in the disarmor. Tamina blocks that up. So then uh, 
Becky Lynch puts the Tsama on Tamina, and Lana doesn't help, so Tamina taps out. Then immediately puts it on Lana, Lana taps out. Then I think Natalia rolls up Becky Lynch, so Becky Lynch is out. Uh, that happens within like 30 seconds of each other. Then it comes down to Charlotte and Natalia. And everyone's thinking, oh, Charlotte's going to win then. It'll be Charlotte versus Naomi at SummerSlam. Uh, so it makes sense because uh, Charlotte and Naomi, like Naomi points this out on commentary. Uh, they had a match which didn't finish because of the welcoming committee. So it would have been uh, a nice way to finish that match off. And then um, Natalia reverses some move. I can't remember what it is. And then she like grabs Charlotte and like launches her like head first backwards into the bottom turnbuckle and that knocks Charlotte out and Natalia wins. So for SummerSlam we've got Natalia versus Naomi. I'm half and half on it. I like the fact that they're actually giving Naomi a title shot because she is sort of like an underappreciated uh, women's wrestler. But at the same time it doesn't I like I would say it doesn't really fit in there that well but it, I think it's just the fact that she's the only credible heel to go against Naomi because t- obviously Tamina and Lana got the whole thing going on. Lana's already had three shots and was terrible in all of them. Uh, but yeah, uh, Natalia's the number one contender. Uh, so that should be interesting. Um, we've got AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens. Um, I watched most of this match or tried to. Uh, it, w- it was alright. I-, I found it alright. Um, the ending was a big mess. Um, so at one point, uh, AJ goes for Styles Clash. Kevin Owens pushes him off into the ref. Uh, the ref is like slowly getting up. There's a bit where he's like just lent bottom rope against the apron like that, just doing this weird blink thing. Like, oh, I'm still dazed, but I'm sort of up. Oh, what's going on? And like during that time, uh, AJ puts a calf crusher on Kevin Owens. Kevin then reverses that into a crossface. To then uh, AJ Styles reverses that into a crossface. And then Kevin Owens like lifts him up, sort of like Charlotte did with Sasha Banks with the bank statement, like turns him over so he's on his shoulders like that. And then the ref comes over and just goes, one, two, three, and then rings the bell. People were saying like AJ's shoulder was up, but it wasn't. Like I guess it was supposed to like that, but his shoulder was still on the floor. Um but yeah, Kevin Owens through that weird finish is the new United States champion, a three time United States champion. And this may result in Styles versus Owens at SummerSlam. If it does, I feel like they should be able to put on a proper match this time. Rather than these two sort of average matches. Um, yeah, just really let them go at it. Um, oh, Baron Corbin versus Shinsuke. That was the next match. Um, see, that's why I didn't remember it. Because it was just like, it just wasn't noticeable. Shinsuke's not been that appealing since coming up to the main roster. Like, if I'm honest, I didn't buy into the Shinsuke hype like I know like a lot of people did and see buying the merch and all that stuff but it's just like after a while it does dry out you know it's like oh cool he can kick really hard and he can do this it's like cool you know like I like I like Shinsuke at first but after a while it's like oh okay I see what your thing is now cool you stick with that uh he had a match with Baron Corbin uh really hard hitting um like, I, I went for Shinsuke because I was like, it's Shinsuke Nakamura. He's recently come up. Um, but the way they ended it was uh, Shinsuke was going to go for Kinshasa. Uh, Baron didn't get up, so he went to go pick Baron up. Then Baron decided to low blow him. So uh, Shinsuke wins by disqualification. And then, um, yeah, and then he goes back, hits him with the briefcase. And end of days, walks out like, I'm Mr. Money in the Bank. Um, what else do we have? Uh, Breezango backstage segment as to who attacked them at Battleground. Uh, that was a nice, funny segment. Um, they had a bit with Papa Shango on the thing where it says the ghost train because uh, obviously Papa Shango is also the godfather with the hoe train. Um, yeah, the Ascension come out and like, yeah, it was us. Uh, we, we were the ones who attacked your office. And it's just like, well, it couldn't have been because you weren't here last week because you were at this thing. And there are, because uh, a few weeks back, they gave them, like tickets to some, I, I don't know if it was a musical or a play or something. But it's like, no, because you couldn't have been here last week because you were at this. And they're like, no, we don't go to stuff like that. We're about heavy metal and all this stuff. So it's really funny. And Fandango goes, oh, yeah? Well, explain this then. Like, pulls the horse head out from last week. And they were like, oh, God, no. God, we're all hardcore and stuff, but we'd never do that. Oh, God, take it away. Oh. Um, 
And then after that, the Ascension walk off, and then they decide discussing. It's like, well, it couldn't be the Ascension. Who could have been? Uh, it goes black. Uh, Tyler Breeze gets knocked out. Van Dago has his little flashlight go. He's like, Breeze, Breeze, you okay, Breeze? Oh my God, I wonder who it was. And then, like he gets attacked from behind, and then does the shot where it's like both of them on the floor, and then just Van Dango getting dragged away, uh, sort of like you see in a horror film. So essentially, what was going to be figured out at a Battleground wasn't figured out at battleground it was just a little teaser to oh here's what's next so that should be interesting it's probably gonna be settled on the following smackdown um what else do we have oh john cena versus rusev in a flag match because fucking of course john cena was gonna win because it's america like you didn't have to you could literally just sit there look at the picture and go oh i know who wins this match because it's america um Again, really stupid stipulation. They had both the flags up on thingies in the corners. So they had to get up. Like, they did that, like, with a kendo stick on a pole match. Where it's like, oh, I'm climbing the corner. I'm going to go. Oh, no, I've been stopped. Ah, power bomb. And, like, they did that for a good 10 minutes. Uh, at one point, Cena hits the AA STF, making Rusev tap out. And they do the whole, oh, it's good, but it doesn't count in a flag match. Um, yeah, that shtick. Um,. Eventually, I think Rusev's the first to get his off the corner. Then a minute after that, Cena gets up and gets his one. And then they're slowly, surely walking up the ramp. Oh, I've got your leg. You can't go anywhere. Rather than just going, oh, you got my leg. I'll stomp on you. You know, you know the simple solution. Um, kept doing that for ages, back and forth. Uh, there's a nice bit where uh, Cena's got the flag, goes up the stairs. like He's crawling up the stairs, gets there. Rusev like crawls down the other side, grabs the little... Uh, like the little podium thing or whatever it is, I forgot what it's called. Um, and it's like he gets it, hits Cena with it, and then decides to put it back. And the logic would be throw it away. If you throw it away, Cena has to go further to put his flag down. Um, but no, he decides to just put it back on there. Um, and then there's a bit where he sets up two tables which are conveniently left by the side. Uh, puts it next to the American podium. And from there you're just like, well Cena's won. Because you know what's going to come next. Uh, there's a bit where like the closest that happens is Russo eventually gets up. Starts taunting for a bit like, yay I did it for Bulgaria. You know, like an idiot heel does. And then he goes to stick it down and Cena like grabs it at the bottom before he sticks it in. He's like, no, America will prevail. Ah, look, I have the power. And he, like throws it away. Uh, Rusev goes for like some move. Cena reverses it. Uh, he goes for another accolade. Cena gets up, puts him into the AA, starts walking across onto his podium. And then AAs him through the tables. Oh god, hiccup. Uh, grabs the American flag, then sticks it in, and uh, for good old America, and salute, and I love you America, USA, USA, and all that fucking bullshit. We didn't need this match. We didn't even need a fucking flag match, it was stupid. Um, what else do we have? Uh, da -da 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 -da. I think that was pretty much it. Anything else wasn't really noticeable, but we had the main event. Because I was trying to think what there was, what else there was other than the main event. So I've gone over Ty and Aiden, Shinsuke and Baron, AJ and Kevin, the women's match, Brizango segment. Oh, Sami Zayn and Mike Kanellis uh, was all right. Sami surprisingly got the win. I thought being uh, Mike Kanellis' pay per view debut, he would have got the win, but apparently not. Uh, Maria again getting involved multiple times. Surely it's a disqualification if the manager gets in the ring. Like, normally it's bad enough when they're on ringside, like, calling to the ref, and then the ref eventually just throws them out. But the fact that she's getting in the match, isn't that a disqualification? Because it's, like, it's interference. Like, a blatant interference. Um, but, yeah. Like, after that, it doesn't work. Sami Zayn hits a Louvre kick, gets the win. Um, and then we have uh, the main event, Jinder Mahal versus... Um, Randy Orton in a Punjabi prison match. Uh, there's a backstage segment where Jinder's like, oh, I don't need you for this match. I can do it myself type thing. Um, like It goes on for ages. There's a nice rule which I didn't think applied because they had the whole... Uh, the doors will open and they will last 60 seconds and then be closed again. Like I thought that was just a standard for it. It was like, we well, could just do that as many times as you want. But it turns out you can only do it once for each door, which is a pretty nice touch. Um... So they do that for ages. Like, 
Jinder goes to the first two doors, gets stopped every time. Um, and then the last door, the Sings uh, turns out uh, under the ring. They come out about the last 20 seconds. Uh, there's a bit where uh, Jinder goes for the Coloss, gets reversed into an RKO, which I was hoping that spot would have happened in one of the other matches, but I'm glad it happened here. Um, and then Sing brothers come up, look at the time, and go, oh, we've got 10 seconds. They grab Jinder and they like drag him out of the ring and Randy's like crawling and then the second he gets there they close the cage and then Randy's like oh shit I have to climb another cage Jinder's on the outside like cheering he's like yeah, yeah I did it it's, and then they're just like why aren't you climbing you've got a head start on Randy Orton fucking climb already and you can win uh, and then they fight outside for another 10 minutes there's a brilliant moment where one of the Singh brothers is small enough to like fit through the bamboo so he re like goes through goes on the outside climbs up top stops Randy Orton then Randy's like punching him and then there's the announce table and you're like holy shit this is a 15 foot drop and he punches him and he falls straight into the announce table and i was like oh my god that was actually pretty cool like that one ups the constant um like backdrops into the tables uh that they've done the last two pay-per-views so that was pretty cool uh jinder and randy keep fighting for a bit randy starts climbing jinder's music starts playing again and uh basically randy's there for ages like well i don't get and like I guess like he's done something to his hands because he keeps like blowing on his fingers like pff, 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 for some reason. And I noticed he's got this like cut on his arm. You can just see this blood trail down his arm. It's not like a major cut. It's like a little one, but you just see the trail. And he's like stood there for ages. And you hear the crowd reaction and just his face like, oh no. And it cuts to the entrance. And the great Carly has returned. Fucking hell. If you wanted it to be more Indian, get the fucking great Carly. I was just like, the only reason, like, the only people, way people sort of remember Carly now, other than the terrible, like, 2010 onwards, was uh, him with a Punjabi prison match where it just doesn't work because he's super big. Uh, he fucking returns in this match to stop Randy Orton. He's, sh like, there's a bit Randy's at the top. He shakes the, um, he shakes the prison, like, oh, I'm gonna stop you. Um, uh, Randy sort of like flips over the top but like holds on uh, which is pretty impressive. Uh, Carly starts to climb a little bit and then just grabs Randy Orton and just starts choking him like that. And then Jinder's there and like climbs, goes next to him. He's like, ha I've got you now. Ha ha. And Carly, Carly is like the most weirdly enough, Carly has the most logic out of all of them. He's like get up. Climb up you idiot. Climb. I'm holding him but you climb. Uh, so Jinder climbs up, slowly drops down, drops down, wins the title. Carly lets go of Wharton and then grabs the title for him and gives it to him. So Jinder retains yet again with the help of the Singh brothers and the returning great Carly. I really hope with this they point out the fact that they go with how Jinder was brought in in the first place. Was he was brought in as Carly's new like brother-in-law. Because uh, like Jinder had just married Carly's sister or something. So if they can keep that, that would be quite nice um you know show some consistency with the stories um but yeah i feel like randy is going to go to something maybe with the great carly uh like it's gonna be randy versus great carly at SummerSlam, and then maybe like the big rumor is john cena versus jinder at uh summer slam if john cena wins there it'll be he'll break rick flair's record of world championships but he'll take it off jinder mahal I don't know what that really says. Although, to be fair, his last reign was only two weeks long. So, uh. But yeah, that was uh, Battleground. Like I said, really confusing, really screwy finishes. Just like anticlimactic and stuff like that. It just wasn't great. Like, I thought Money in the Bank was bad because they're two, the two endings to their first two matches. But this one was just... Yeah, this was just as bad. I'm going to give this one a 5 out of 10. It was average. Um... Like, as a casual fan, you're just like, I don't understand this. As a hardcore fan, you're like, what the fuck is this? Um, so, yeah, it just wasn't great. And SmackDown really need to fix, like, sort themselves out. And SummerSlam's coming up. And their SummerSlam performance last year wasn't great. So, uh, all the best for SmackDown. I really hope they do improve. But that was my review on uh, WWE Battleground 2017. Let me know what you think. And I shall see you in the next one. Great. Bye.